So map number two coming up here. Frost, a much larger four-player map compared to Overgrowth, which saw game one come through. Spawning up in the top right-hand position as the yellow Zerg player. Currently, 1-0 up in this best of three. It's no guard. To the lower right, his opponent. Losing game number one, going for that speedling all-in. Is he going to play a bit more standard this game? It is Monks. Monks has to do something more than what he did last game. No guard, on paper, should be favoured. No guard is a GM player, so ranked top 200 in EU. Monks is a Masters player, high Masters player is that. Every player who does compete this evening is, of course, in Masters League at least. And that is due to the requirements of getting into the WCS qualifiers. You have to get that. Qualifiers 1, 2, and 3, which are tonight, tomorrow night, and Wednesday night, are all, basically, you've got to be in Masters League. However, Thursday's qualifier is the Ladder Wild Card. And what you've got to have to get into that is at least 200 wins on the EU Ladder in at least Masters League in Season 1 or 2 of 2014. It's a big ask. It's a lot of games you need there. And so, the bracket, considerably smaller. And potentially, therefore, easier to get your qualified place. But being the last qualifier, many of those players who would be able to get into that are still competing tonight. So many people want to get up into WCS as that is where the big audiences are. That is where your fan base or your potential fan base is going to sit. And so there's a lot of pressure for these players to potentially make a really big name for themselves in 2014 Season 2. Spawning pool coming down here from No Guard. Uh, this is before his hatchery. Meanwhile, over on the side of Monks, he again got an earlier pull down, roughly the same time as his opponent, and both players getting their natural bases within a second of each other. This is a really standard play from both of them, not wanting to be too greedy, but also not wanting to be too aggressive. This early pull just makes them safe, and economically speaking, it doesn't knock you into too much of a bad spot either. Because the queens get out sooner, you've got the inject faster, Four additional lava a bit quicker than you would have against a hatch first it's only overall after about kind of five minutes six minutes or so that they start to really level out and the hatch first gets a slight economic edge no god gonna get the first scout out with these lings bounding across the map sees the timing of that hatchery and get taken out by a queen there monks though he's seen where his opponent is spawned he knows that there was a hatchery at a similar time. So both players should be relatively comfortable now in what their opponent's doing and should feel pretty safe actually that nothing awful is going to occur to them in the early game. So what's mid-game ZVZ all about? There's a couple of different options we could be seeing from them. Very roach-heavy styles are pretty damn popular at the moment going into either roach hydra or roach infester mainly. However, there's also the option of the big Zergling Baneling play in the early game, but I'm loving this from No God. Sneaking this queen over to pick off an Overlord. It's actually going to be quite a big loss for Monks. He can't save it in any way because the queen didn't start attacking first. Sure, the queen's vulnerable if there's a lot of speedlings out or any lings at all that could corner it, but due to No God having an Overlord in position, he knows that wasn't coming. However, Monks, he's moving out with two queens. And that's going to force a lot back. But is he missing an inject for this? Yes, he is. He's also got that supply block a little bit early, which hurts. No God going to be looking to alleviate any risk that he's getting out of this though by getting an extra Overlord now, despite having a decent amount of supply. So he's not going to be getting that bump in his build, which unfortunately, Monks has. A small little win here for No God, who's up 33 to 28 drones right now. He's also getting out his lair. The road on though coming down for Monks, the Evolution Chamber and speed all simultaneously in production gonna be interesting to see what this layers for especially since we don't have the roach one yet and of course as i say that down it goes there for no guard so both players gonna be going into this roach composition the upgrades slightly in no guard's favor he's ahead there but the roach timing is a lot in monks his favor he's got that much earlier roach one and he's also got the much uh sorry the much later layer so Swings and roundabouts, advantages on both sides. The big thing though, 
is actually that no guard is going to have the upgrade and also roach speed thanks to the lair quicker that makes a big difference especially the roach speed because if you're either attacking or retreating and you don't have speed on your roaches and your opponent does you're going to be losing some on any time there's kind of a running engagement also your positioning and concave can be achieved faster so you should trade better with that speed upgrade five roaches now coming down from no guard meanwhile Monks is adding in a good number of links. He's already up to 18 and has got a huge number more. While taking a third hatchery, doesn't yet know about his opponent's third attempt, but neither does No Guard. No Monks is attempting to take his third hatch. Plus ones coming down on both sides, although a good 30 second advantage for No Guard, who's only pumping roaches. Is he going to be able to get enough roaches to defend against these links, though, and save his third base? That's the big question we've got to be asking ourselves, because in they come. There's a huge swell of lings heading over now, and I think No Guard is going to have no choice but to cancel this. The complete surround, the Roach is out of position, cancel force, and a big win there for Monks. He's only two workers down, but his third is safe and steady. However, a lot of lava have been spent into these speedlings, and as the Roach numbers increase, those speedlings get less effective. Against small groups of Roaches, Zerglings are extremely potent because they get a good surface area and therefore can deal a lot of damage. But as the volume of roaches increases, the surface area decreases, so there's less damage done per roach. Whereas the roaches keep dishing out good damage to those lings. So a good push across the map now. No guard knows that his roaches have got speed, that his roaches have got plus one, and he's got a small window of opportunity of about 20 seconds that he's trying to utilize. Backing against the corner, minimizing that surface area to the roaches, Good positioning, plus one though, now kicking in for Monks' Roaches, but he's far down in the number, 24 to 10. Things looking really good for No Guard at the moment. Snipes off those Queens with enough energy, four transfuses just to maximize his chances now. But of course Monks, he's got the defender's advantage, the faster resupply. The Roach numbers starting to stabilize now, but overall resources lost, favoring No Guard. A couple of Roaches not engaging right now, that's not ideal. But they are joining the fight, but sheer volume of roaches heavily in No Guard's favor from the start of this engagement. In he goes, taking a couple of shots. More queens coming out. Frantic defense right now from Munz. Is he going to be able to hold this? Down another queen falls. That's immediately going to be hurting his injects. But No Guard, he's got to do some good damage here. Economic damage. His third base is still in construction. But Munz, he knows that he's not going to be able to hold this. GG is cooled. And No Guard is going to be able to take this series 2-0 with the good luck from Monks at the end there.